Praise the Lord with me, somebody. Praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the everlasting Father. Praise the one who was, who is, and who is to come again. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are going to continue with our lectures vis-a-vis -vis Holiness unto the Lord Revival Studies. We have already seen the first five lectures. In lecture one, we saw 65 heaven and holiness terms or terminology. For example, we saw the definition of purity. We saw the definition of without spot. We saw the definition of without blemish. We saw the definition of without fitness, etc. In lecture two, we saw the definition of holiness. In lecture three, we saw the biblical meaning in the definition of holiness. In lecture four, we saw the two pillars of holiness. In lecture five, we saw that holiness is a three-step approach. This is lecture six. Lecture six has to do with the fact that holiness is impossible without consecration and sanctification. Holiness is impossible without consecration and sanctification. We have already seen sanctification in lecture four. We have seen uh, sanctification and consecration in lecture four. And we have also seen consecration and sanctification in lecture five. We are emphasizing the fact that consecration and sanctification are very important because we want to lay a good foundation for our lectures. Keep in mind that we have 150 lectures in, lecture, in, in, in series one and uh, 200 lectures in series two. So we want to lay a good foundation. That is why we are emphasizing on consecration and sanctification. Now, before we continue, I would like us to pray. So begin to pray, ask the Lord to give you a revelation of how important consecration and sanctification are. You cannot make it to heaven without consecration and sanctification. You cannot be holy without consecration and sanctification. You, can, you cannot be holy without total consecration and total sanctification. You cannot be holy without the consecration of your whole spirit, soul, and body and the sanctification of your whole spirit, soul, and body. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask the Lord to give you a revelation. Holiness is impossible without consecration and sanctification. Holiness is impossible without total consecration and total sanctification. Holiness is impossible without the consecration of the whole spirit, soul, and body. Holiness is impossible without the sanctification of the whole spirit, soul and body open your mouth and begin to pray to the lord ask the lord to give you a revelation of the importance of total and complete consecration and sanctification in jesus name heavenly father we thank you lord for this wonderful opportunity lord help us to understand how important consecration and sanctification are lord jesus we thank you because we know you have answered us lord we cover this lecture 
with the blood of Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this lecture 6 is holiness impossible without consecration and sanctification. As I said in the previous lectures, we are going to have at least five lectures on consecration and at least 30 lectures on sanctification. So for the moment, we limit ourselves to their various definitions. Consecration has to do with setting something apart unto the Lord. It has to do with setting yourself apart unto the Lord. It has to do with dedicating yourself completely unto the Lord. Wise sanctification has five meaning. One, to set apart. Two, to consecrate. Three, to cleanse. Four, to purify. Five, to make holy. So in this lecture, we are interested in the fact that holiness is absolutely impossible without consecration and sanctification. This lecture is divided into the following five points. One, worldly holiness versus biblical holiness. Two, consecration, a distinguishing factor. Three, sanctification, a distinguishing factor. Four, the difference is clear. And five, resume. So let's start with point one. Worldly holiness versus biblical holiness. You know, worldly holiness has to do with living in such a way that men will pray, uh, men will praise you. You please men. You are you are you are a men's uh, pleaser. You please people. You want people to praise you. You want people to glorify you. You have you want people to worship you. And so you do things to please them. John 12, 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You know, in the Bible, there were some people who love the praise of men more than the praise of God. For example, we have the Pharisees, we have the Sadducees, we have the scribes. These people, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. They appeared Righteous outwardly, they appeared righteous to unto men, they appeared holy unto men. In Matthew 23 28a, we see that the scripture says, Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. All these people in the Bible, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they were appearing righteous unto men. The same is true today in the church. There are many people in the church who appear righteous unto men, but unto God they are unrighteous. Unto God they are unholy. Unto God they are ungodly. But unto men they appear righteous. So if your holiness is that which is right in the eyes of men, then you are condemned by the Lord. Your holiness must be right, must be that which is right in the eyes of God Almighty. Your righteousness must be that which is unto the Lord and not unto men. If your holiness is that which is right in your own eyes, you are also condemned by the Lord. There are many people today in the church who are holy unto themselves. They are righteous unto themselves. They are righteous in their own eyes. We see examples in Deuteronomy 12, verse 8, Judges 21, 25, Luke 18, 9 to 14. And so the Holy Bible 
strongly condemns worldly holiness, holiness unto men, or holiness unto yourself. Biblical holiness has to do with that which is pure, or right in the eyes of God Almighty. We see many examples in the Bible. For example, in Deuteronomy 12, 25b and verse 28, I read, When thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, 28, observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee forever. When thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. That was Deuteronomy 12, verse 25b and verse 28. Also see Deuteronomy 6, 17 to 18 and Deuteronomy 13, 18 in that respect. So your righteousness must be that which is right in the eyes of God. Your holiness must be that which is pure clean or right in the eyes of God Almighty and not in the eyes of the world or in your own eyes. Point two, consecration, a distinguishing factor. Consecration, a distinguishing factor. Consecration distinguishes worldly holiness from biblical holiness. There are many who are not consecrated in the church. The church is full of people who are not consecrated. There are multitudes of people in the church worldwide, in the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ worldwide, who are not consecrated. They call themselves believers. They call themselves Christians. They call themselves followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but they are not consecrated. They have not yet separated themselves from the world unto the Lord Jesus Christ. They have not yet dedicated themselves totally and completely unto the Lord Jesus Christ. They have not yet set themselves apart unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw an example uh, last uh, in, 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 the, in the previous lecture, but let's see an example here. Exodus 32, verse 1. Exodus 32, verse 1. And read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Oh, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up, out of the land of Egypt, we worth not what is become of him. You see, the Lord used Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. The Lord performed awesome miracles before them. In Egypt, the Lord performed awesome miracles. The Lord parted the Red Sea. The Lord gave them water from the rock. The Lord gave them manners from heaven. Yet, they did not dedicate themselves unto the Lord. They did not set themselves completely and totally unto the Lord. The Lord was protecting them with a pillar of fire in the night and a pillar of cloud. The Lord came down in the pillar of cloud. They saw the glory of God. They saw how awesome God Almighty is. Yet, they continue to rebel. In this Exodus 32 verse 1, they wanted to use their hands and to make gods that would go before them. How unwise and how foolish was that? How could they have used their hands to make gods that were going to protect them? God Almighty is from everlasting to everlasting. The God who parted the Red Sea. 
the God who gave them manners from heaven, the God who gave them water from the rock, the God who protected them, who delivered them from Egypt. Yet they wanted to use their hands to make gods to go before them. We see how foolish they were. Why? Because they did not consecrate themselves. They saw all the miracles of God. They saw all the wonders of God. They saw all the signs and wonders of God. They saw all the miracle, uh, miraculous performance, performances of the Lord. Yet, they continued to rebel because they were not consecrated. The church is like that today. The church is full of people who have not consecrated themselves. The church is full of people who always rebel against God, despite the fact that God is protecting them. God supplies all their needs. God protects them. The fact that they are alive is a miracle because many people are dead. Multitude of people die every day. But the fact that you are alive is a miracle. The fact that all these people are alive is a miracle from the Lord. Yet, they continue to rebel against God. May you not be so. In Jesus' name, Amen. So throughout the Bible, we are commanded to consecrate ourselves. For example, in Ezekiel 43, 26b, the Bible states, They shall consecrate themselves. So the, the Bible was the Bible is crystal clear that we should consecrate ourselves. The children of Israel were rebelling against God. So God told them to consecrate themselves. God is telling us now to consecrate ourselves. Because consecration is very important. Without consecration, we cannot live a holy life and make it to heaven. You are not only to consecrate yourself. You are to con consecrate everything that you have. Everything that you have. In 1 Chronicles 29, 5, verse B, uh, part B of 1 uh, Chronicles 29, verse 5. Part B of 1 Chronicles 29, verse 5, I read, And who then is willing to consecrate his service? This day unto the Lord. You are to consecrate yourself, your service unto the Lord, everything that you have unto the Lord. So, consecration is total consecration, complete and total consecration, yourself and everything that you have. You have to consecrate everything unto the Lord. The supreme example of consecration is Christ himself. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was consecrated. Let's look at Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 10.20, I read, By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say his flesh. That is Hebrews 10.20. Then let's look at Hebrews 7.28. Hebrews 7.28, I read, For the law maketh men high priests, which have infir infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forever. The Son here refers to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was consecrated forever. Therefore, we must also be consecrated. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ were consecrated. Therefore, we, his followers, must also be consecrated. May you be consecrated in Jesus' name. Consecrate yourself unto the Lord totally and completely in Jesus' name. Consecrate your whole spirit, soul, and body unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Point three. Sanctification, a distinguishing factor. Sanctification, a, dis a distinguishing factor. Sanctification distinguishes worldly holiness from biblical holiness. Let's look at uh, an example in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 19-21. 2 Timothy 2, 19-21. Please open your Bibles with me. To 2 Timothy 2 19 to 21. I read, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that that name 
the name of the Lord or the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. 21. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, admit for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So those believers who are sanctified are vessels unto honor. They are ready to be used by the Lord, and they are prepared to do every good work unto the Lord. May you be so in Jesus' name. May verse 21 of 2 Timothy 2 be fulfilled in your, in your life in Jesus' name. The supreme example of sanctification is Christ himself. In John 17, 19, we see that the Lord Jesus Christ was sanctified. And it reads, And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. While the Lord Jesus Christ sanctified himself, as revealed in John 17, 19, because he wanted us also to be sanctified. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sanctified himself because he wanted us to be sanctified. He wanted you to be sanctified. He wanted me to be sanctified. May you be sanctified in Jesus' name. Hebrews 10, 29. Hebrews 10, 29, I read, Of how much so punishment, suppose he, shall he be thought worthy, who had trodden underfoot the Son of God, and had counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So the Bible is warning the believers worldwide is warning us that if we do not take the word of God seriously, if we disregard the word of God, if we rebel against the word of God, if we are indifferent vis-a-vis -vis the word of God, then we have ourselves to blame because the Bible is crystal clear. God wants us sanctified. God wants us to set ourselves apart unto him so that he will cleanse us, purify us and make us holy unto him. May you do so in Jesus' name. Point four, the difference is clear. The difference between those who are sanctified and those who are unsanctified is clear. The difference between those who have, those who have consecrated themselves and those who have not consecrated themselves is, is clear. Let's look at an example in Luke 18, 9 to 14. Luke 18, 9 to 14. I read. And he spoke this parable on unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican, I fast twice in the week, I give tithe of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. 
14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. In this scripture, we see that the Pharisee was exalting himself. He was saying that, you know, that he's not like other people, that he was fasting twice a week, etc. He did not recognize that it was the grace of God that made him who he was. But the publican recognized that he was a sinner and was, cry, was crying unto the Lord to have mercy upon him. And the Bible teaches us that the publican went down or went back to his house forgiven by the Lord. But the publican was not, but the Pharisee was not forgiven. The publican went down or went back to his house forgiven by the Lord, but the Pharisee was not because the Pharisee was praising himself before the Lord. All the things that the Pharisee said, you have to do them. But you have to do them with a humble heart. You have to do them. You have to pray with a humble heart. You have to pay your tithes with a humble heart. You have to fast with a humble heart. You don't do. You don't have to do it and boast. You don't have to fast and boast. You don't have to pray and boast. You don't have to pay your tithe and boast, as the publican was, as the Pharisee was doing here. So do everything unto the Lord with a humble heart. Do not exalt yourself because you are nothing. You are who you are by the grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. Under no circumstances should we boast about ourselves. Those who boast, there are those who have not consecrated themselves unto the Lord. They have not been sanctified. Those who do things unto the Lord and they boast, those who despise others, those who think that they are better than other people, all those people that are in the church, they are deceiving themselves, they have not consecrated themselves, they have not been sanctified. If you are one of them, repent and consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Repent and be sanctified. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Point five. Resume. In this lecture, we are saying that holiness is impossible without consecration and sanctification. Indeed, no consecration and sanctification implies no holiness in heaven. Those who are not consecrated and sanctified, they cannot live a holy life and make it to heaven. So we see how important it is. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was consecrated. He was sanctified. Therefore, you have to consecrate yourself unto the Lord. You have to be sanctified. So that by God's grace, you'll be able to live a holy life and make it to heaven at the end. Without consecration and sanctification, holiness is impossible. Without total and complete consecration and sanctification, Holiness is impossible, and consequently, heaven is impossible. You can only make it to heaven if you are holy, and you can only be holy if you are consecrated and sanctified. May you be consecrated and sanctified in Jesus' name. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be consecrated and sanctified in Jesus' name. It is time for us to begin to pray. So 
pray to the Lord, cry to the Lord. Don't be like the children of, of Israel in the wilderness. Don't be like the multitude of people in the church who have not consecrated themselves unto the Lord, who have not sanctified themselves. But ask the Lord to give you the grace to consecrate yourself unto Him and be sanctified so that you'll be able to live a life of holiness all the days of your life here on earth and make it to heaven in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and begin to pray without total and complete consecration and sanctification. Holiness is impossible and consequently heaven is impossible. Once again, you can only make it to heaven if you are holy. And you are, and you are only going to be holy if you are consecrated and sanctified. Ask the Lord to give you the grace. Do not look on the right. Do not look on the left. Do not look at what people are doing. Do not look at what people in the church are doing. Do not look at what uh, preachers are doing. But look at the word of the Lord. The word of God is crystal clear. Consecration is indispensable. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was consecrated. Sanctification is, indis is indispensable. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself was sanctified. Pray that you will be consecrated totally. Your whole spirit soul and body will be consecrated unto the Lord. In Jesus' name, pray that you be sanctified wholly, totally. Your whole spirit, soul and body will be sanctified in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful revelation that consecration is indispensable. Lord Jesus, you yourself were consecrated. We thank you for this revelation, Lord. We also thank you that sanctification is indispensable because you yourself were, con were sanctified, Lord. King of glory, just as you were consecrated, just as you were sanctified, Lord, let every one of us be consecrated and be sanctified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye-bye for the moment. Stay blessed and see you in lecture 7 in Jesus' name. Don't miss lecture 7. See you soon in lecture 7. Bye-bye for the moment in Jesus' name. Amen.